proportion. Wonderful day, students. Welcome back to my classroom. For today's lesson, you will learn how to define and illustrate the meaning of proportion using concrete or pictorial models. Let's begin! Let's have first a quick review on ratio and equivalent ratios. I have here two donuts and a drink. The ratio of the drink to donuts is 1 is to 2. 1 is to 2 can also be written in its fraction form 1 over 2. We learn to get the equivalent ratio by multiplying both quantities by any number. Let's try to multiply 1 over 2 by 2. This gives us 2 fourths or 2 is to 4. This means that 1 is to 2 is equivalent to 2 is to 4. Now let's try to multiply it by 3. This gives us 3 is to 6. This means that 1 is to 2 and 2 is to 4 is equivalent to 3 is to 6. We also learned that we can also get the equivalent of a ratio by dividing it by its factor or getting its lowest term. Now let's try to get the lowest term of 3 is to 6. We know that the greatest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, while 6 divided by 3 is 2. This means that 3 is to 6 is equivalent to 1 is to 2. Again, these are examples of equivalent ratio. But this also shows proportion. Do you know what a proportion is? Proportion is a statement of equality between two ratios or fractions. Let me give you an example. 1 is to 3 is equivalent or proportion to 3 is to 9. There are two parts in a proportion. The numbers we find inside are what we call means, while the number outside are extremes. We will know if the ratios are proportioned to each other if the product of the means and the extremes are equal. Now let's try. Let's multiply the means. 3 times 3 is 9. Now let's multiply the extremes. 9 times 1 is 9. Here we can see that their product are both 9. This means that they are proportioned. Let's have another example. I have here proportion 1 is to 2 equals 3 is to 4. Now let us see if they are proportioned to each other. Let's multiply the means. 3 times 2 is 6. Now let's multiply the extremes. 1 times 4 is 4. Now are they equal? No, 6 and 4 are not equal to each other. This means that the ratio 1 is to 2 and 3 is to 4 are not proportioned to each other. Now let's have another example. Let's try to find out if these fraction forms are equivalent or proportioned to each other. To determine if they are proportioned, let's use the cross multiplication method. 6 times 1 is 6, while 2 times 3 is 6. Since the products are both 6, that means they are proportioned to each other. Let's have one more example. How about these ratios in fraction forms? 1 is to 2 equals 3 is to 4. Let's use the cross multiplication method. 4 times 1 is 4. 
while 2 times 3 is 6. Since the products are not the same, and 4 is not equal to 6, this means that these two ratios are not proportioned to each other. Great job! Now, if in a given proportion, a term is missing, it can be solved using cross-multiplication. Let me show you an example. Let's say a baker can bake a cake using two cups of flour. This gives us the ratio of the cup of flour to the cake, which is 2, is to 1 or 2 over 1. Now the baker needs to make 3 cakes. The question is, how many cups of flour does the baker need to make 3 round cakes? The first thing that we need to know are the quantities given. We have the number of cups of flour, which is 2, and the number of cakes that we can make, which is 1. We know that for every 2 cups of flour, we can make 1 cake. Now let's set up a proportion. The problem is, what if we make 3 cakes? How many cups of flour should we have? Since we do not know yet, let's write n. Now to find a missing term which is n, let's use the cross multiplication. 3 times 2 is 6, while 1 times n is 1n, but we are only going to write 1. The next step is to divide the products. 6 divided by 1 is 6. Great job! This means that we need 6 cups of flour to make 3 round cakes. Wonderful! Let's have another example. Let's say we have this proportion. Let's find the missing term. Again, we will use cross multiplication method. 12 times 1 is 12. n times 4 is 4n. Let's only write 4. Now let's divide the products. 12 divided by 4 is? You are right, it's 3. Therefore, the missing term, or n, is equals 3. Good job! Now, let's try this one. How are we going to find the missing term, n? We are going to multiply the means and the extremes. 3 times 3 is 9. 9! Times n is 9n, but let's only write 9. Now let's divide the products. 9 divided by 9 is 1. Therefore, n equals 1. Wonderful! Great job, students! Now here are the things that you learned today.